Everyone wants fixed teeth right away. And honestly, I get that. But here's something most patients don't realize. Sometimes, what makes or breaks your implant success isn't the surgeon, the implant brand, or even the amount of bone you have. It's something you can't see, can feel, and can control once you leave our office. It's called micromotion. And it's one of the main reasons I sometimes tell patients I consider to be high risk, as in those with soft bone, thin bone, infections, systemic issues, or heavy smokers, that we might need to take a slower approach instead of rushing straight into immediate load implants. Now I know that sounds counterintuitive, especially since our practice is known for all on same day teeth. But let me explain why understanding micromotion could be the single most important thing you ever learn about implant success. When patients hear about all on X or same day implant teeth, it sounds incredible. And it can be life changing when everything goes right. But what a lot of people don't realize is that biologically, the success of implants depends largely on one thing, how stable the implant stays while the bone is trying to heal around it. That process is called osteointegration, where bone cells literally grow and fuse to the surface of the implant. For that to happen, the implant has to remain absolutely still, kind of like a cast around the broken bone. If there's too much movement before that bond forms, it's like trying to heal a broken bone while constantly bending it. It just doesn't work. Fun fact, the first person to introduce titanium implants to dentistry was actually an orthopedic surgeon from Sweden. So yes, orthopedic principles absolutely apply to dental implants. We're dealing with the same biology, just in a smaller space. Dr. Choi likes to use this analogy, and I think it's perfect. Imagine you're setting a metal pole into wet concrete. If you leave it still, the concrete sets around it and the pole becomes rock solid. But if you start wiggling that pole before the concrete hardens, even just a little, you're going to end up with cracks and weak spots. That's exactly what micromotion does inside your jawbone. Even the tiniest movement during the early healing period can prevent the bone from attaching properly to the implant surface. Instead of bone forming around the implant, soft tissue fills a gap. And once that happens, it's game over for osteointegration. Here's where it gets tricky. Most of the patients who come to see us for full mouth implants aren't starting with perfect bone or gum health. They've usually had years of dental problems like periodontal disease, failed root canals, etc. So if you go back to that concrete analogy, it's like trying to set a metal pole into concrete that's already been partially hollowed out. We can remove infection, graft bone, and build a more stable base, yes, but biologically, those sites are still healing when we place the implants. So the margin for error, especially when it comes to micromotion, becomes much smaller. And here's something else that's very important. If a patient presents with multiple risk factors, things like not fully controlled diabetes, smoking, untreated sleep apnea, active periodontal disease, or widespread infections around the roots, it's almost always better to stabilize the foundation first before placing implants. These conditions can significantly compromise healing and increase the risk of micromotion or even outright implant failure. When we do surgery for the first time, we're able to plan and place implants in ideal locations most of the time, where they're both biomechanically stable and prosthetically optimal. But with revision surgeries, it's a very different story. We often have to work around previous implant sites, areas of bone loss or scar tissue, which means we might need to place new implants in less than ideal positions just to find enough bone. And revision surgeries are always more difficult. There's less bone to work with, more scar tissue, and the biology just doesn't respond as favorably the second time. So by taking the time to optimize health and address these issues first, we dramatically increase the odds that the implants will integrate properly and last for years. Now, let's go back to the topic of micromotion. Micromotion can come from a few different sources. Chewing on hard foods too early, things like nuts, tough meats, or even crusty bread, clenching and grinding, especially at night, a loose or flexing temporary processes, which can transmit subtle movements to the implants underneath. And here's a tricky part. You don't feel micromotion happening. It's microscopic. There's no pain, no obvious looseness, nothing noticeable day to day. But those micro movements are happening at the cellular level, and they can quietly compromise the integration process without you realizing it. That's why I personally recommend at least three months of soft foods and liquids for full arch cases. It's not to make your life harder. 
is to minimize the chance of micromotion and failed osseous integration. The way you eat during that period directly affects how well your implants fuse with bone. Now, if we really want to eliminate micromotion completely, we could. Micromotion is virtually zero when implants are buried under the gums, meaning they're not exposed to any chewing forces during healing. So if we were truly up to me, here's what I would do with full arch implant cases. After full mouth extractions, I'll wait about four months for the bone to heal. Unfortunately, the patient would have to wear complete dentures during that healing phase. Then after four months, I would place implants and let them heal another four months before attaching teeth. That way, we would have complete control over micromotion during both healing phases. The reality though, is that once the patient leaves the office, we have no control over micromotion. That's why patient compliance, sticking to soft foods, following instructions is so critical. But I also understand that most people don't wanna wait eight months for fixed teeth. In fact, most of us wanted our new smile yesterday. So what we're trying to do is find that balance between biology and lifestyle between ideal healing and patient expectations. So when I recommend that a patient I consider high risk, maybe due to poor bone quality, ongoing infection, or multiple systemic factors, start with a denture or a healing phase before doing immediate load implants, it's not because I don't believe in all one X. It's because I wanna set them up for success long-term. If someone's bone quality is poor or they've had multiple infections, waiting even just a few months before loading implants allows that bone to remodel, mature, and stabilize. That way, when we do place implants, the foundation is stronger and more predictable, and the risk of micromotion drops dramatically. I wanna give you an example. Dr. Lazaro and I recently met a patient who had advanced gum disease. So bone loss around nearly every tooth, and he smokes a pack a day. We discussed two treatment options. Option one, remove all teeth, allow healing for about four months, and then place implants. Option two, immediate load all on X, meaning implants and fixed teeth the same day. Dr. Lazaro as a prosthodontist pointed out that adapting to dentures can be very difficult for patients, especially if they've never worn any removable prosthesis before. From a surgical standpoint, I knew option one was biologically safer, giving that bone time to heal and the bacterial load time to drop, and that reduces a lot of risk factors. The patient ultimately chose the immediate load route, and that's fine, but I made sure to have an honest discussion about the risks. We went over how micromotion, poor bone quality, and residual infection could all compromise the outcome, and that any revision later would cost him more time, money, and effort on our end. So what's the takeaway? Micromotion is invisible. You can't see it, you can't feel it, but it's one of the biggest reasons implants fail early on. That's why we emphasize soft diets, no grinding and clenching, and protecting those implants during the critical healing window. That's when your implants decide whether they will truly become part of your body or remain a foreign object your bone rejects. So the next time your dentist says, stick to soft foods or recommends a short healing phase, remember, they're not slowing you down. They're protecting your investment because the last thing anyone wants is to redo an entire case because of something as small yet powerful as micromotion. If you're considering dental implants or full mouth reconstruction and you want to understand which approach is safest for you, come see us at North Texas Dental Surgery. We'll evaluate your bone quality, your bite, and your risk factors to determine the best timing and strategy for long-term success. Because in implant dentistry, it's not just about placing implants. It's about giving them the environment they need to thrive.